Hey guys and welcome back to another Immersion 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be going over how to interact with something or how to open a door, how to pick something up, whatever you want to use the interaction for and we're going to be doing it nice and efficiently by using blueprint interfaces. So this is a good video if you want to learn how to interact and also a good video if you want to understand how blueprint interfaces work. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So in this very basic example what I'm doing is pressing E to interact and interact is going to open this door. So if I was to press E here, nothing's happening, but if I go up to it, press E, the door is going to open and I can then obviously walk through. And I'm also going to be showing you in this how to do it just based on if you are close enough to an object you can interact with it. And I'm also going to show you how to interact with something when you are only looking at it. So again, this video is going to be going over how to interact using Blueprint interfaces. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we obviously want to create our Blueprint interface. So to do that, we're going to right click, go to Blueprints, and then blueprint interface like so and you can name this whatever you like but this is a blueprint interface which for me is going to be doing the interacting so I'm going to name it interact interface as that makes the most sense for me and I know I'll be able to easily find it under that name so I'm going to open that up straight away and you'll see this is a read only document so we can't actually do any code in here all this does is it just allows it to be read so you can only take what's already in here not add code into it so this is a function which I'm going to name interact as that is what that function is going to do. Now you see in the bottom right as well we can also add inputs and outputs if you want. I don't necessarily need to but I'm going to anyway just to show you. So let's add an input by pressing the new parameter button there and this is going to be interactor which I believe is spelled like that and the variable for this is going to be a character reference. As for me the only things which can interact in my game is characters i.e. the player. And I'm also going to add an output and this one is quite useful and this is going to be success or did interact or anything like that and this is going to be a boolean. So the point of these inputs and outputs I've added in is so when we do interact we can see which player is currently interacting with it so if you have a multiplayer game that's where that might be quite useful and the success output is so that you know if it did actually interact. So in my example I'm doing a door we will now be able to know if the door did actually open or close or if something went wrong in the code. So you should have something which looks a little bit like this, again it's read only, so at the start of the function and the end of the function, or if you haven't added an output, you'll just have the start. So again, it should be like this, and we can close that, that is all we need to do in there. Nice and simple. And so now I'm going to open up my character blueprint, or whatever it is for you that you want to be able to do the interacting. So for me it is the player which will be interacting with different items. So for me that's content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character. Now what I'm going to do in here is I'm also going to create an action mapping so the player presses this button to do the interacting. So I'm going to go to edit, project settings, once it loads we're going to go down to input on the bottom left here. In here we're going to hit the plus action mapping and name this whatever we want, so I'm going to name it interact and I'm going to set this to be the E key. Now with this you can set multiple keys, so E or F, you can also set it for different platforms, so PC, Xbox, Playstation, whatever you like, and you can also set up key bindings. So once you've done that, we can close this, right click in our event graph and search for that action mapping, which I named mine interact there under action event, like so. So now whenever the player presses the button which you set up for this, this is going to be fired off. Now what we're going to do is when we press the interact button, it's going to interact with anything that we are currently close to. So to do this, we can right click and get overlapping actors with the class filter, just searching for actor. So that's now going to get all the actors that the player is currently overlapping and interact with them one by one. To figure out which one to interact with, we're going to drag out of overlapping actors and you'll see that is an array, so it's going to get multiple actors, all of the ones we're currently overlapping. And we're going to go into a for each loop with break. The reason we're doing the break is so that when we find one we can interact with, we're going to stop the loop because we've already interacted with it, we don't need to go through all of them. And as the array element, we're going to do does implement interface. Because again, we only want to interact with anything which currently has the blueprint interface because that has the code inside of it. And we're going to set that up later on. The interface for me is obviously the interact interface, like so. You'll see this is a Boolean return value, so it's going to be true or false of if it does or doesn't implement the interface. So we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch with that as a condition and that going into the loop body of the for each loop with break, like so. False means it doesn't have the interface, so it could then be a wall, which we obviously don't want to interact with. So we want to go to the next item, which might be a gun, which we do want to interact with. We want to open it up. Maybe a door would make more sense. So you've got the wall, don't interact with that. Then you have the door, do interact with that. 
So again, that's why we're doing this here. True means we are going to interact with it, so we're going to come out of array element once again, and we're going to do interact, or just call the name of the function which you named it in the Blueprint interface. So again, minus interact, and it should say message in brackets next to it, connecting it to true like so. And you'll see here we have the input and output. So the input of the interactor, I'm just going to do get a reference to self, and the output of success, I'm not going to do anything with, but obviously you can do if you want to in the future. Then also out of this, we're going to go into the break of the for each loop, because again, we found something to interact with, so we can stop searching through the rest of the items which we might be overlapping. And that is now that part of the code done. We can compile and save that. So this is how the player is going to interact with something that they are overlapping. And on screen now, I will also put an image of the code for interacting with something which you are looking at. So you have to be looking directly at that object or that item in order to actually interact with it. So now let's go on to doing the code for actually doing the interacting. So this is going to call the function to interact. Now we need to actually interact with it. And this just saves us from having to do this code in every single blueprint, which you might have to do if you're just doing it based on the box collisions and stuff like that. Blueprint interface is a much easier way of doing it. So we'll close this, open up the item we want to interact with, which for me is just going to be a door, and we're going to write the code in here. So ignore that, that's just from when I restarted it earlier. So in here, my code is simply a custom event called open door, which is going to play an animation for opening a door. I do have different videos on this as well if you want it, but I've just got this code done already set up for me. What we want to do next is go to class settings up at the top, go to interfaces and add one under the implemented interfaces, and we're going to add interact interface like so. And we can compile, save, and on the left you should see we now have a tab called interfaces, and we have all the functions in the, underneath that, which for me is just interact. If we double click, we can open that up, and you see again we have the input and output, so this is basically what it looked like inside of the interface. So now we can call that function from inside the interface, but it can be different for each and every single item we have. So you can have a door does a certain code, and then a gun does another code, but you're using the same interface, so again it makes it really nice and efficient. Now in here, all I'm going to do is call my custom event called open door, and I'm not going to use the interactor because I don't need to, and I will tick the success just to show you how you do that. I'm going to compile and save. Now you don't need to do a custom event in here like I have done. The only reason I've done that is because I've used a timeline, which is a latent node, meaning you can't put that in a function. So I've done it in a custom event like this. Obviously set this part out however it makes the most sense for you. And with that done, that should be it completely done for us. So we'll compile, save, and close that, and hit play to test this out. So again, if I press E here, nothing's going to happen. If I go up to the door, press E, you'll see that we have now interacted with that door and it has opened it up as that is the code which we told it to do. So I think that'll be it for this video, which I don't know if you want to do. We've set it up, so we've created a blueprint interface in which allows us to interact with any item which we've created. In my example, is a door to open and close it like this when I press the E key. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.